Everything around us, including us, is made of matter. A matter consists of atoms, each atom consists of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Each of these particles have an equal and opposite antiparticle making the antimatter. The antiparticles have the same properties as their equivalent particles but different in electric charge. Proton equivalent in antimatter is antiproton. Electron is anti-electron, also called positron. And neutron, well, it is the same, because it has no charge, so in its anti-form it would retain no charge. It is like zero and minus zero, both are the same. And since particles and antiparticles are opposite in charge, when they meet they annihilate each other, creating a large explosion of energy. It is like adding 1 and minus 1, you will get 0, but without the explosion. Antimatter particles are exactly the same as matter particles, only opposite in charge. So you can create an identical antimatter to almost anything. Antiparticles, antimolecules, antiplastic, and even anti-galaxy. The only way on Earth to generate antimatter involves particle accelerators producing a few particles at a time. But since antimatter and matter annihilate each other, it is hard to maintain any antimatter. In 1995, scientists were able to create an antiatom, it didn't last long, but it hinted the ability to gather a few of those to create an antimolecule. In 2007, David Cassidy from the University of California was able to take two positronium atoms each one consisting of an electron and a positron, and combine them into an antimolecule, Dickinson 16. Of course, the molecule was short-lived as the electron and positron annihilated each other. Although antimatter may sound like something out of science fiction, it is real. It was created along with matter after the Big Bang, but antimatter is rare in today's universe and scientists aren't sure why. Subscribe for more videos, turn on post notification, like the video if you do. Thanks for watching.